Do you know anything okay. about the Wanderer at this point, or is this all completely new? I guess so you've seen I believe, a little bit. Yeah, I think that I could be wrong about this, but I believe that, like, the unveiling of this character, or maybe your first time ever trying it in its early stages, was on that same charity stream in November that I was a part oh, of. Oh, yeah, so probably. It feels like, yeah, because I remember seeing, like, a tiny bit of it and uh, of i believe what was the first time i mean i'm not going to details obviously but maybe your first time really seeing it so it feels very much like we've come full circle to now be officially releasing it and i'm here also i'm over here <laughs> back again for Once more again. it's a lot better than it was then it's a much more okay. playable character nice you check it out let's check it out all right sweet you're in charge of asking all the what, what is this place? newbie questions and the like. <laughs> so that when we put it up so I'm on... So put Twitch chat of a job is what you're saying? Yeah. Well, when we put it up on YouTube, we want me explaining the mechanics well. So you can be like, hey, you didn't explain that at all. And then nobody has any idea what it does. And I'll be like, oh, yeah, that's true. Okay. Sounds good to me. Playing Ascension 20, I think pathing in Act 1 is pretty similar to with the other characters, so we're generally looking for like, campfires and elites. Nothing super unusual there. Hehe, <laughs> you drop rabbit, thanks for the 10,000 bits. Thank you so much. Much appreciated. We'll forward those on to Transform. We are raising money today for Transform, which is a charity that facilitates clothing swaps for transgender youth. It's a really cool cause. I think they do good stuff. <laughs> and also, I <clears throat> I think in all the, the hubbub and bustle of uh, audio settings and other exciting topics, I kind of glossed over part of why it's mildly relevant for me to be here is I used to stream this game a lot, so I, I kind of know what's going on on that level. And I also am transgender. So I also kind of, it's like if you drew a Venn diagram of like, you know, this transgender charity slay this fire stream, I'm like right in that fucking middle. So yeah, I just felt like it was good to, to throw out there. There you go, a kind of knowledgeable guest. <laughs> but see, I'm kind of knowledgeable about two different things. Which is rare. It adds up. Ultra Lot 1 thing is a stretch. Ultra Lot 2, that's even more uncommon. I have no idea what we're meant to do here. Do you want a random rare card? Should we go crazy? Show me your rare card, Steve. Alright. Withdraw. Withdraw gains us Man, an this artifact. Guy looks sick. Yeah, I know. Gains 10 block and exhausts. This is not a very exciting rare card. <laughs> it seems like a good one, though. I mean. Yeah, it seems great. I'm sure it's okay. It doesn't really force us in any particular direction. All right, here's our fight. Okay. I'm playing defense because I'm getting attacked. So far, it's pretty straightforward. Mildly impolite things the four months up. I'm going to shoot you too. What happens if you replace the starting relic? You don't have the starting relic. The starting relic starts you in patience and heals you for one HP for each clarity you have at the end of fights. I think I'm blocking again. This is also still pretty straightforward. I think that soon something interesting will happen though. Yeah, I see these like icons around the character are like Chekhov's icons here. I know they're gonna be relevant sooner or later, but yes. for now I recognize strike and defend. So our starter relic starts us off remembering patience. And patience gives us a coil each time we play a card. And now the third tooltip in the sequence, uh, coil. <laughs> says whenever you remember a new non-patient's memory or end of turn when snapped, you deal one damage per coil to all enemies. So, so coils are here. stacks that you're accumulating, is that right? Yeah, it's like a thousand cuts, but it all goes off at once at the end of something, basically, instead of going off as you play cards. Okay. So I'm going to get this to eight stacks so that it kills the small spike slime, and then I'm going to use Eye of the Storm, which gains me clarity of patience and remembers a new memory. So I remember a new memory, I gain uh, greed, rememory, I gain memory of greed, which says whenever you kill a non-minion enemy you gain 20 gold, so we actually gain 20 gold for killing the slime. 
And I have clarity of patience, which means that we keep the effect of patience. So we'll keep on gaining coil whenever we play cards, and then whenever we remember a different memory, our coil will blow up again. So you're like progressing <laughs> this memory of generating coils, and you'll use it up. Can you remember how you... So you like you use up these stacks when we... you learn a new memory? Yes, the stacks blow up every time you remember a memory that isn't patience. Okay. So if I were to play Fresh Adventure, I would just kill Acid Slime, which would end the fight. I guess I'll do that. Yeah. Well, I'll just play two strikes <coughs> instead, and that way we get the 20 gold. I think we get the 20 gold anyway. I don't know entirely. Probably we do. Materialize Burning Flask and Color Spray. Oh yeah, uh, none of these cards would make any sense to you. Well, that's fun. <laughs> <laughs> What's your best guess <laughs> as to what these cards do? Uh, Mildly um, Polite thinks of the four months, Darth Bob thinks of the two months. Alright, well, burning, I feel like. Let's see. Eight burning. My first guess it was some kind of damage over time, like poison, but eight is a pretty high number. So I'm gonna guess it's something like when they attack, they take eight damage. That's my guess for burning. For materialize, Close. gain four block. I have no clue what blocking is, but choosing one of three material components. <laughs> Only perfected strike? All right, fair enough. <laughs> you get four of these mysterious and probably useless block points. Uh, one of three material components. Hey, okay, I'm, I'm not even... One of three material components. I really have no clue. Deal 12 damage to all enemies. That part I'm on board with. And apply a random debuff to each. Okay. And then remember Envy. Well, I can guess what two-thirds of that card does. I got the damage and the debuff down, but... I mean, that's passing in some rating systems. Fair enough. So, burning is like poison, like you guessed. Uh, the major differences are that it falls off much faster, so you lose a third of your burning every turn. Okay. And it prevents healing. This is a character that needs to end fights quite quickly a lot of the time, so fighting against, like time eater and awakened one when they heal a ton is really problematic so mm. as a balanced lever for that if you can set them on fire they stop healing so that's what okay. burning does material components are there's basically a separate deck of cards which you can't get any way other than uh, generating material components and they're mostly zero cost cards with minor effects so material okay. components are a way to spam lots of cards, which don't necessarily do a ton, but you could get a ton of patient stacks with them, for example. You could generate a ton of slow stacks against Giant Head. You could make a letter opener go off a lot of times, things like that. Mm -hmm. And then Envy makes you gain vulnerable when you remember it. So that's like a fairly significant downside to this card. But while you're remembering Envy, every time you target an enemy, you apply one vulnerable to them. I'm okay with taking color spray. I think it's a fun card. Okay. It also seems closest to like some kind of pride flag, which is relevant, and I think is the metric by which we should be making our decisions today. That's fair. So that, that was going to be my recommendation for you. I'm glad we're thinking on the same page here. No, that's totally fair. <laughs> there is just like a straight up pride flag in the art, pretty much. Not exactly, but uh, so if we find determination. Okay. Also, pride is one of the memories. So with remembering memories, so the, this one that we have that is Envy, which is a negative one, if we remember it and then remember something else directly afterwards, does that circumvent the downside? You would gain the vulnerable and not be able to get rid of it. Oh, right. Okay. There are memories it. which are negative to keep, um, well, or at least have negatives involved in keeping them. I think Sloth's probably the best example. Its effect is you draw one less card every turn and gain one additional energy. So if you didn't want that, if you wanted more card draw and didn't care much about generating more energy, then forgetting that memory as quickly as possible could be a pretty big deal. Another right. one is Chastity. Chastity has buffs when you remember it, but then debuffs you as you are continuing to remember it. So you wanna like remember that and then exit it again immediately, sort of. I see. 
So I'm curious, I, I haven't really followed along, I mean, as a downside of moving across the country and starting a job, I haven't really had a lot of time for the old Twitch. So I'm curious what the development of this character looked like. Like, were you involved in it or was it, <clears throat> I know the community oh, yeah. played a huge role in it, but I'm curious like what that was like. So pretty much all of the uh, high level design is by me. <laughs> A good number of the cards are like, I was doing a stream and I was like, okay, we need to come up with some cards. This is a general direction of the character. Does anyone have any sweet ideas? So some of the cards were recommended by viewers in situations like that. But all of the like balancing, um, a ton of the playtesting, most of the design, all of the narrative direction, although not the nitty gritty small bits of the actual writing the narrative is pretty much me. Um, other people have contributed a tremendous amount though none of the art is me at all a good number of the card ideas are from other people all of the coding is from other people I think it's safe to say the art you contribute is just the flawless gameplay thank you Jessica <laughs> so in that fight we got clarity of gluttony which gives us plus two max hp every time we kill an enemy so we managed to get plus two max hp there we got 20 gold as well from greed so there are these meta scaling memories which have a downside associated with remembering them often or just don't do anything to help you in the fight which is sort of a downside in and of itself um mm -hmm. but do give you a bonus later which is intended to make the hallway fights a little bit more interesting because it's not just like kill the enemy as quickly as possible. You can think about trade-offs. Is it okay to take one damage here to extend the fight, the turn sort of thing? Right. We got a bunch of burning stuff and schools <coughs> of magic. Uh, what is there to say about these cards? I think the burning cards are mostly self-explanatory. Firebolt's the first card we've seen which scales from Clarities. So Clarity and is clarity. when you hold on to the memory. Okay. And this one gets stronger the more memories you're holding on to at the same time. Okay. Lust is the first card we've seen which... Well, Scorching Ray is the first card we've seen which remembers Lust, which makes it so your attack supply to burning, so it's like having an Envenom in play or something, basically. It's not too complicated conceptually. Mr. Aquafina, thanks for the 10 months. Did I say thank you for the $20 donation, Dangeratus? Dangeratus? Being a silent lurker since Filthy Robot got me here a year ago, but had to donate for this excellent cause. Love you, Jorbs. Hey, much love to you as well. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, Scorching Ray is like a bouncing flask that scales with strength and also remembers and venom. <laughs> sort of. Which seems like a lot for a card to do. Uh, the memories are interesting though because remembering a memory you can think about which memory you're remembering right now sort of like having one orb slot as defect which is full of an orb that does something but then when you remember a new memory you lose the last one that you had unless you're able to gain clarity of it so sometimes remembering a new memory with a card is actually a downside depending on what's going on because you may have wanted the thing you were remembering before right and then Schools of Magic draws three cards and has two different effects based on the conditional of if you have no duplicate cards in hand. If you have no duplicate cards, you gain a clarity. If you do have duplicate cards, you exhaust one of each duplicate. So this is a way to get clarity. It's also a way to trim some statuses or things from your deck in certain situations. I would suggest <clears throat> that given that it's Valentine's Day, I think the lust based card is most appropriate. I'm all for it. <clears throat> Great. One million percent for it. <laughs> um, I don't really have any idea what I meant to upgrade. I'm going to upgrade the one that applies burning because burning seems like it's probably pretty good. Not sure anyone could say for sure. I think I heard... So chat was he saying something about there being voice lines? Yeah? Was there some kind of... Okay, I heard some kind of like... 
Last charity was when I, I was couldn't just quite hear it, but it sounded badass. This is how I would describe it. Like I heard no words, just the general shape of the sound, and that was all. Yeah, I have your volume down. Uh, it's very, very good voice acting. Ray Chase reached out to me via email and said, hey, I heard you mentioning that it would be cool to have a voice actor. Uh, I'm down to voice act. And That's yeah, so cool. turns out Ray Chase is a very, very, very good voice actor. So that was wonderful. You wish the voice That's lines awesome. were touched louder. You can change the voice line level in the mod settings. We could also change what the default is. I generally agree that they could be a little bit louder. Delta donated $25. Slash charity was when I was just starting to come to terms. So just so happens this morning was a huge step toward transition for me. So I feel like donating for a great cause. Thanks for being awesome. Hey, thanks for being awesome you too. Thank, thank you very much. much. Yeah, thank you. Here's to a, a wonderful future. I want to play color spray here, but... um. You know, I don't know how this works. If we are remembering Lust, when we play Color Spray, dealing 12 damage should apply to Burning, which should eat the artifact charges. And then we apply a random debuff after the artifact charges are gone, I think. Yeah, it worked. So we weakened one and applied more Burning to one and weakened another one. Seems fine. I think I undid streamer mode at some point and my Discord's making sounds. Let me turn that off real quick. Yeah, I was just about to undisplay yeah. capture you because I have to go into my Discord. That's um, fine. Goodbye, chat. Farewell. I miss you already. Alright, you're back. It's okay. Oh, phew. Let's never do that again, chat room. I think, I don't know, Steve, to what extent you'd agree with this, but the thing I'm maybe most appreciative of, this is a, a bad way to start this thought, but the thing I'm most appreciative of from people in Twitch chat is telling me when my audio settings are messed up, because it's so hard to determine on your own that your audio settings, like, it's true. It's making a sound. I, so people, the people who are saying, like, Hey, I think your Discord is making noises. Like you are the true, the unsung hero. So I'm singing about you right now. We didn't have your audio playing on the channel for the first like right, yeah. three minutes I said a of this call or something. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Most of those words were my audio sucks and I hate it. But I mean, you still missed them regardless. It's true. So this is an example of remembering a memory being sort of a downside. It's hard to play color spray here because we're currently remembering pride. The pride um, has a downside where we lose two dexterity while we're remembering it, although we blocked that with our artifact charge from withdraw. But if we keep remembering it, we permanently upgrade a card in our deck at the end of combat. So we want to end the combat without forgetting that, ideally. But it's very difficult. Like. This card remembers something, this card remembers something, this card remembers something. So I'm not sure that we right. really feasibly can. Could maybe use a potion? Oh, well... Wait, you can use potions? Actually, we have lust, so we can just kill that this turn. And then play nothing next turn. And maybe we'll get somewhere? But it's a lot to uh, just pass that turn with two very good cards in our hand. Oh, good. Interesting. So this is the first turn seven we've played. There's a rainbow for you. There it is. Um, on turn seven, the Grimoire arrives in your hand. The lore of this character is he is a wizard. He's killing the spire. He has a book that feeds him power, but it eats his mind. And as he, well, just as a general rule, as a character, his mind is gone and he doesn't really have proper memories anymore. That's why the whole mechanic is trying to remember things. Mm. Um, also though, as a fight goes on, the Grimoire sort of feeds him power and he starts to remember some memories maybe, but eventually he'll um, blow up. His, his brain will stop being able to handle this. So that happens at the end of turn 7. We snap. 
Uh, when we snap, we deal 6 damage to all enemies and lose 3 HP for every clarity. So right now we'll deal 12 damage to that and take 6 damage. And then we can't remember or have clarity of any memories for the remainder of the fight. Which means we're losing pride and not getting an upgrade, as well as taking a bunch of damage, mm. no longer healing from our clarities at the end of the fight, all that stuff. So you really want to end fights pre-turn 7? Yes. Um, what? Okay, what, my first thought is, what is the order with this and the Ancient Calendar or whatever? Like, what happens Ancient Calendar first? goes off before Snap. Okay. We tried really hard to make everything that you'd want to happen before make you Snap happen. happen. Yeah, the that's great. One really big exception is Burning, which goes at the start of the enemy turn. It's pretty hard to make it so that will tick before you Snap in a sensible way. So that one doesn't right. really happen. I see. But pretty much everything else does. So we have this Grimoire card. This is a legendary starter card. Legendary cards cannot be removed from your deck and you can only ever have one of them. And when we play it, we get to choose one of three material components. Oh my god, I haven't seen this art. Oh, wow. <laughs> oh my god, that's so incredible. These are, yeah, these are holy shit. <laughs> These are incredible. I think those are both Chevy. Chevy's done some really, really sweet art. Wow. Brothers of Cool. Thanks for the Twitch Prime. Agba Mushu to you as well. Yeah, Snapping is not related great. to your starter relic now. Um, unfortunately, none of these like deal damage, though. So I'm going to like take Energy Bulb, and then I think I'm just going to draw six other cards. Does that do it? Not without forgetting... Oh, right. ...our memory, unfortunately. But that's okay, we just don't get to remember our memory forever, I suppose. If I... well, it's also the burning is killing, so it wouldn't work anyway. Here's our snap. Snap for the kill? Snap for the kill. We got a wing boots. Oh, dude, and after snapping, your character, whose name I definitely know, is devastated. I like how it's reflected it's, it's in It's on the top left of the screen. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Dr. Alejandro, thanks for the 9 subbed. Wait, the character's name is also George? That seems a little, I don't mm, know. Suspect. Self-promotion? Self-promotion, <laughs> anybody? I'll George is now live Alejandro. in the Steam Workshop. Okay, um, we got some new cards. Let's, yes. Let's Prepare gains you block equal to your coil, and then you gain five coil. This is a card that maybe could be reworked, I don't know. Um, five coil is going to blow up for five AoE damage at worst. So it's like a right. crappy AoE skill at worst. But then on top of that, sometimes you will have coil before you play the card. If you're remembering patience a lot and maybe not remembering other memories much at all, you could perhaps build a deck where this is blocking for like 20. And mm -hmm. you're just trying to keep your coil around a lot. Uh, there are a couple of other things which interact with coil in favorable ways, I believe. So there's an attempt at there being a package of synergies there. I'm not sure it works right now. Be interested to see if other people can make it work or not. Yeah, because have other people been able to? Sorry to interrupt you, but have other people been able to like play this and test this, or has this been entirely? Oh yeah, it's been available. Okay. It hasn't been on the workshop before today, but there's been a way to download the jar file and play it if you want to. So quite a few people have played it. Can you please respond to this comment? Package of synergies is Jorb speaks for archetype. Can you please respond to that? I'd like to hear oh. your thoughts on it. <laughs> I'm having to ban so many of my long-term viewers today. It's rough. <laughs> it's really rough. Hey, it was for a good cause. Uh, <laughs> so Magic Missiles is another card that gets stronger with clarity. This is the class's strongest multi-attack. You can put together fairly easily put together stuff so that this is hitting like six times and then there's a way to permanently buff the damage on cards um 
So Memory of Wrath gives you plus one damage permanently on the last attack you played every time you kill a non-minion enemy. So you can make this be like dealing 18 damage every time it hits and make it hit like seven times. It's sort of like the searing blow of the class. I think it's positioned mm -hmm. to be slightly more playable than Searing Blow, though. Wait, Does Jessica wait a know how to dig? Wait oh a second. Gosh. Did I just hear you imply that Searing Blow isn't the perfect card, the ideal card that all their cards aspire to be? Yes. I must not have heard you correctly. Let's just move on and not get in a fight. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> That's like one of my pet cards. I just love that card so much. I just, I just had a searing blow plus sixteen, uh, ironclad That's, heart kill. That's pretty good. Yeah, for the first yeah. time in like forty five hundred hours of playing the game. <laughs> but it was nice that it comes up once every four thousand hours or so. That one, it's good to know. It must be a good card. <laughs> How unfortunate that it took you four thousand five hundred hours to pick the card. <laughs> really <cards fall> here. <laughs> and, and flame ward is it's a little bit like the crippling cloud is where i'm thinking of it it's intended to be very good next time you are attacked apply 11 burning to all enemies and gain 11 block and exhaust so you can play this on a turn where you're not getting attacked and it will still give you block the next time you do get attacked and then it's dealing a ton of damage and blocking for a lot. The downside is that it exhausts, it's slow to apply the damage. If you think about it, it applies the damage when they attack you so it doesn't deal damage to them that turn and won't start dealing damage to them until the next turn when they start their turn. So it can be a little bit slow. If you compare it to Crippling Cloud, Crippling Cloud damages the turn that you play it so mm -hmm. they have a similar amount of damage that they deal over the course of like three or four turns. Anyway, I'm taking the Flame Ward. I'm not asking your opinion on that one. I'm sorry. Why'd you even bring me on here? I thought I was being brought on to be the consulting expert for gameplay decisions. Did you want to take Flame Ward? I forget the other two, so let's say yeah. All right, sure. Well, you're good then. Whoa! Yeah, whatever, whatever's, going right. on, whatever's going on in the top left of that card frame is incredible. The top left What's of there? this card frame? No, like, does that mean that, sorry, that card I was trying to describe that. Ah, yes. It's a very cool looking card template. This is a legendary card. It's a very weird card. Uh, you probably know what 40 means? <laughs> Imagine deal 40 damage and zero energy are pretty clear. How many fingers do you think I have, George? I don't know what 40 means. <laughs> That's fair. Um, <laughs> ephemerals, like, ethereal plus exhaust at the same time ah. sort of thing. Okay. It Basically, the idea is that no matter what you do, this card's going to exhaust um, at the end of the turn. Entombed means that this card doesn't actually start in your draw pile at the start of a fight. It starts in your exhaust pile. And then there's some sort of cue for it to be put into your hand. So this one is entombed until you snap. I see. Okay. And so the turn that you do snap, you get this card that costs zero energy, it deals 40 damage, and when you play it, it destroys itself. So it self-removes from your deck. So it's like buying a big fire potion that you can't use until after you're snapped, sort of, is the idea. Right. How, so, I'm trying to think about, in a decently successful run, are you going to be snapping often? Like, it seems like if you're can snapping more than once or twice, you're probably not going to be making it very far. Is that a fair assessment, or am I missing something? There are some cards that make you snap for a large benefit. So I've had runs that got to the heart where I was playing a lot of the time snapped because I was getting a lot out of it. I um, see. I've had runs where I've been snapped almost all the time. I've had runs where I haven't snapped at all. If in like floor one, a jawworm eats your thumbs, does that hurt your ability to snap for the rest of their head? Isn't it? It's just the sound of your fingers hitting your palm, right? I I don't know. 
I feel like you can probably snap without a thumb. I I can't. <laughs> I I tried off camera. Your fingers grow back at campfires. That's another good point. Oh, uh, okay. Yeah, I didn't think about that. You you got me there, Castev. We have Chattering Strike, which is just a multi-attack, basically. Play this card one additional time means it, like, Prox Kunai or Shuriken for you. Means it stacks up patients twice as fast, stuff like that. But mostly it's just, like, Twin Strike for Ironclad. Same idea. Mm -hmm. Wandering Mind draws three cards and remembers a random memory you do not have clarity of. So this is a card where if you're really good at gaining clarity of things when you remember them, you might want this so you can remember more things. Um, if you're not very good at gaining clarity of things, this card may be actively bad because it's going to take you out of the good memory that you like purposefully go into for your deck to work. Right. Withdraw, we've already seen. We have that one. Prestidigitation is a common power. There are three common powers. Uh, this one, at the start of each turn, apply one weak or one vulnerable to a random enemy. I actually think it's like pretty good in boss fights. I like having one of these. Gets rid of artifact charges, and if you upgrade it, it's too weak or too vulnerable, which means that it often weakens and vulnerables enemies by itself. If you have any luck and maybe one other card that helps. I'm seeing chat activity based around the beta art for Wandering Mind. <laughs> oh no! Oh, it's not no! here! Chat room. Wow, that's a bug report. What a betrayal. Oh, I can't make the bug report oh, though God. because you are my Discord window. Unlucky. Oh no! He's gonna get away with it, chat! <laughs> Oh, no. Um, I think we just take backup prep here because backup prep's absurd. Sure. Do you tend First to agree? I, I tend to agree. <laughs> Preserved insect's pretty good too, right? It can't be as good as bag of prep though, can it? I mean, you could put the preserve insect in like the smallest pocket in the bag of prep. So I think that makes bag of prep superior. I'll, I'll accept that judgment. I'm down. Yeah. So in a fight like this, you may want to try not to kill them until you have a chance to like random into gluttony. But on the other hand, we're getting attacked for 13. Mm hmm Yeah, I was thinking about, so people who watched my stream will be familiar with the fact that I loved trying to get maximum value out of cards like feed, often to my own detriment. And so I'm wondering, I, I imagine snapping is like one of the mechanics that kind of discourages you from just trying to get a lot of those memories and then get a bunch of those permanent bonuses. But is there much element of trying to like, you know, I guess there's probably some of like trying to just randomly get those memories so that you can get some bonuses. Yeah, there's definitely some of it. Mm -hmm. You can also definitely land yourself in trouble if you go too hard for that. I'm... So why is, why is all of Chad saying Bible Thump? I'm going to say Bible Thump too, but why are we all saying it? Because we found her. Oh, hang yeah, on, I'm going to hit the right. second Bible Thump. Jeez, that was some verdict for that. In my 45 minute long Searing Blow plus 16 Ascension 20 heart kill, I think about 20 of those minutes were spent trying to feed on enemies. <laughs> and then I ended the run with like 80 current HP. It's so, it's great. That's yeah. beautiful. Very typical. Very yeah. typical. Yeah. So hurts like a hemokinesis, sort of. But it has text, I thought it had a heartbreaking heart. Yeah, I don't know what the text says. I'm going to stop looking at it because it's making me sad. Um, will gain seven block and entomb a random card in your hand until you snap. It costs zero until played. So you can use this like a true grit to thin your deck out to get an infinite going if you can be fast enough about it. You can use this in conjunction with cards which snap you earlier to make the turn where you snap stronger. You can just use it as a block card. You can use it to get rid of a status, but then you will have a burn in your hand or whatever when you snap. 
Is, um, is the upgrade like the true grit upgrade? Yeah, the upgrade makes it so you choose the card. Right. Mm -hmm. I've had fun with that. <clears throat> I don't take it very often though because it doesn't have official art yet. It's it's still just the beta but, art. I mean, I didn't want to say anything about it, but yeah, <laughs> it's a good reason not to take it. Arcane weapon at the end of each turn, attack a random enemy for six damage. This is like actually playing a strike. So if you attack a spiker with this at random, it will deal you thorns damage. <laughs> it will also deal more damage to things which are vulnerable. Uh, deal more damage with strength. It will apply mm -hmm. on hit effects like lust. It will make burning for you. This is another one of the common powers. You can get this somewhat regularly if you want it. A really fun mm -hmm. interaction that this has is Akabeko um, and Pennib. It won't advance them, but it will use the damage buffs from them. So if you have an Akabeko and a Pennib on 9 and you play this, it's going to be hitting for 28. And then it's going to hit for 28 again next turn. Is that intended? Yeah, that's intended. Okay. It plays an attack like if you played a strike, but it won't but it advance any of the card. relics that are related to it. Yeah. I exactly. see. I I'm curious about the just general design decision to have powers at common. Like, was that something that you felt was missing from the base classes or something you're curious to experiment with or i'm just curious for your thoughts on that i don't remember why i did that okay this is a character that interacts with powers a little bit differently because all 14 of the memories are sort of like a scaling power to some extent and so mm -hmm. So many of the cards sort of have that type of effect on them. Like a like a bouncing flask all of a sudden has Envenom on it, and it makes powers interact with the character a little bit differently. And so right. the the actual power cards for the character are a bit different. I think they're a little bit less focused on scaling specifically and a little bit more focused on other things. And having three common ones like felt okay. Right. I don't know what I'm meant to take here. I think let's take an arcane weapon and see how it goes. Okay, I was gonna say you're not allowed to take that hurt card. It's just not allowed. Or whatever it was called. Bible. Yeah, I, I don't remember it. Yeah. Blocked all memory. I'm gonna upgrade flame. Is that a ward. joke? That sounded like a joke. My old friend. But no. Cannot rest. Would you like me to try to copy the voice acting for you so that you can hear it? But yes, like please. through my attempt to make it. All right. Oh yes, please. My old friend. But no, we cannot rest. That was perfect. Ten out of ten. I hope you know that now that you've done it once, you're gonna have to do it in all subsequent fights as well. I mean, I can try. You can try and you can succeed as well. So we got flame ward set up. We got arcane weapon set up. When do we play Color Spray? Probably f first? Oh my gosh. This is what I, I wanted to happen. Turn. Does that help you? <laughs> this turn, thank you. This is what okay, I wanted like to happen. When you happen to write down. With the character. I wanted turns where I like just had five cards and it looked innocuous, but then once I started deciding what to do, I realized that there were like 17 different ways I could play the turn and I couldn't work out which one was best. I see. So every card we play before we remember new memory deals one more damage with patience. But if we play Color Spray, our strike will apply Vulnerable. And also, we will debuff Lagavulin, which could make it vulnerable to begin with, or give it minus strength or something. It also could banish it for a turn, which would mean we couldn't attack it anymore this turn. So I don't really know if we play Envy, like, or Color Spray, rather, first or last. I have no real idea. I don't know if we want to, like, gain clarity of Envy or Patience. I think since we have arcane weapon, we want clarity of envy. So let's go. What if we just played them in alphabetic order? I'm going to okay. almost I... do that. 
I see we've agreed to disagree about this turn's optimal play. Um, I've ran him into Sloth, which discarded the rest of my hand. Randoming into Sloth is very enjoyable. I would describe it as one of my favorite things. It a causes. Of yours, would you say? Yes. It causes um, defining moments where uh, oh, yeah. one is truly tested. Well, it reminds me. So I, uh, I like this game a little bit. I ended up buying it on the Switch because I was doing a lot of traveling, and thought that you know, on long flights across the country, playing some Slay the Spire sounded great. And I don't know if you've played the Switch version of this game at all, but I have had the hardest time for some reason not pressing the button to press to get into your potions. Which, why would you ever press that? But the button to press to get into your potions <laughs> and the button to end turn, I get those confused so often. And I've had so many fights on the Switch where I just hit the end turn button at the start of like turn one. And that's just life. Can Just you the do the save exit to reset floors on Switch? You know, I've never tried because of course to me that's of dishonorable. <laughs> I agree. And I care about my family name. But maybe I could. I don't know. I feel like it's my own, you know, fault. Oh, I should have to live with the concept. <clears throat> yeah, that's the other thing about the controllers. Yeah, we don't have to get into this. Let's talk about some cards. I'm down. <laughs> Mindworm sweet. Uh, Damn, I don't know if we want it, but yeah, isn't it? It's like anger, except it deals more damage when you're yeah. snapped. Yeah, anger an with example, outside. An example of a card that may actually want you to be snapping. Right. Fairy fire is sort of like half a shockwave, which I think makes it quite a lot worse, but. Like, it's not terrible. Depending on if you're remembering Virtue or Sin, it will do either the weak or the vulnerable half. It also costs zero instead of two, so. I see. And then index, draw three cards and put three cards from your hand on top of your draw pile in random order. This is like a war cry bumped mm -hmm. up a notch. Should this and then exhaust? if you're using fetch lands, it's just upside, yeah, it's great. Yeah, it's a little bit like Brainstorm, huh? Does that upgrade to Brainstorm? I guess it upgrades to Brainstorm, actually. <laughs> brainstorm minus. I think we can just max HP here. Probably could have taken Index. I don't know. I don't know. I'll max HP. We have to beat Guardian. Guardian's actually very difficult to beat with this character. Guardian has the largest hit point pool of all of the Act 1 bosses, and this is a character that blows up on turn 7. Mm. Um, Guardian's got a bunch of health and gains a bunch of shield and hurts right. you for attacking it, so... Do you ever tire Is of our endless dance? Do you ever tire of our endless dance? No, Steve, I don't. Does it... Does the, like, power that you have that attacks at the end of turn, does that do... You said it does trigger spikers, right? It's gonna trigger Guardian? Yeah. It does not trigger guardian because guardians the little difference between the two whenever you it? play an attack that targets uh, this uh, is uh, what it uh. says well what do you know yeah it's really weird i think we start with color spray and we just hope that the debuff's good we have applied burning to guardian and get some vulnerable going as well why does the strike power upgrade to less damage than strike it is a power. I think. We have randomed into Temperance for the first time, which gives us strength equal to the number of clarities we have. But we can't really gain mm. clarity of it, I don't think. But yeah, this is another one of the, like, try to make all of the clarities type cards. What does this say? Right. Whenever you play an attack, take four damage. Oh, you don't even have to target Guardian with the attack. So if there was like a two guardian fight or like a guardian plus slime boss fight. Oh no, that's diabolical.
This is my first time- this is like the ultimate first world problem. This is my first time doing anything streaming related with only one monitor. It's a hard life. I'm struggling to read what some of these What happened to your other monitor? Oh, I see. <laughs> I understand. Fair enough. Did you... And also the table, so I only have... I'm using my dining room table for this. And it's not large enough for both monitors. Well, it's kind of large enough, but not really with the other shit I have on it. But eventually, I'm gonna buy a desk. And then... Oh, that's a I cool can probably idea. set up both monitors. Yeah, I think it sounds cool. Did you drive your stuff from, uh... California? No. Did you, like, put it on a train or something? I, uh shipped some of it and brought some of it on flights and got rid of a lot of it is oh, basically wait. yeah just because the cost of like, you shipped it like on a ship like yeah i put it on the boat went down to the panama canal which is a great invention but they figured it really? out really no i'm making shit up okay. i shipped it to fedex but it was i mean i could as a boat aficionado uh, myself <laughs> I feel a little bit disappointed right now. What's your favorite kind of boat? Me. I mostly love when I am a boat. <laughs> it happens somewhat but, regularly. Was Captain's Wheel released when you were playing? It, no, it's come afterwards. Horncleat? Was Horncleat out when you were playing? No, not Oh, so you don't really know what it's like to be a boat. Unless you have, like, personal experience. I don't know what it's like to be a boat. You, yep, that's true. I don't know what it's like to be a boat. It's is really that when you sweet. have all three uh, boating artifacts? It is. It's really, nice. really cool. You're missing out. I feel like I'm missing out. Wait, we're gonna snap. Oh, we're okay then. We go to two, right? Ooh, we got time at Time it is a really fun one. Advance all buffs and debuffs one turn through time. So this makes our arcane weapon go off. This makes the burning tick and wins us the fight without us. Oh, cool. Oh, right, okay, because the burning isn't going to happen before we snap. Okay. Correct. Ooh. I think this is the first time I've seen Death Throws art on stream. Oh, no, no, no. I pointed it out that other time because it's not safe for work. Sorry, any of you who are at your jobs. You can see a little bit of side butt there. I was going to ask why, but I realized I just shouldn't ask. It's not clear to me. Just, just don't. <laughs> Is there a bug where burns don't do damage when you retain a card with diligence? I don't think so. Did you maybe have strange pendant in play? Yes, there is. Oh, Bros Mike said there is. Well, there you go then. Thirsting Sword is the really cool one here. It's like a different take on Reaper is sort of the idea. Um, typically, I take this card very high, but then don't play it until like the Act 3 and 4 gauntlet happens. Because it sure. loses you 3 max HP when you play it. But right. it also regularly can be set up to be a full heal if you just apply some burning to enemies, which isn't that hard to do. And sorry, can we just go over one more time what the fancy border on this This is means? a legendary card, which means that you can only have one of them. You cannot remove it only from your deck or transform them. it once okay. you once you take it. So you can only be a little thirsty. Big donation. Oh gosh. How do I oh. go to the donation page? Well, I think I, I think I've got it. <laughs> Yeah. Oh, I yeah. I think that all swept up. We gotta. I, I, I forgot. I was having too much fun. <laughs> I'm, yeah, I'm having a blast. I mean, I think after we fixed the audio, it was, it's was it been all downhill since there, but this is pretty good, too. <laughs> Wait, the audio fixing was the best <laughs> part? Is that what? It, I, um, it was great, man. There were so many things to try. It was incredible. I don't think I read Ginger Snap's message. Ginger Snap donated $10 and said, Awesome calls from an awesome streamer. Been watching YouTube Jorbs for some time. Glad to finally get to see Twitch Jorbs Podge. 
Thank you very much, Ginger Snap. Do you, after leaving Twitch for like a few months and then you come back and look at what Twitch is now, is it like the walking into the room that's on fire sort of thing every time? <laughs> like, what is Podge? Who is YouTube Jorbs? What, what is going on here? There, there's a little bit of that. Yeah, a little bit of lie. that. <clears throat> Jessica. Oh, did you have any interest in adding a stream to the donation goals i know we talked about that oh, i'm putting yeah. you putting you on the spot now i know you like so, have a real job and you have an apartment to set up and stuff right i have i i would be willing to we talked about this before and now i'm not sure the best way to handle this we had talked about the idea of setting up a donation incentive for me to actually do a stream at some point in the future which i'm down to set that up but I want to make the amount, I'm going to leave it up to you because you're the expert when it comes to this. I want to make it quite difficult to achieve. Okay. That's what I want. I'll add it to the top. <laughs> Possible, but not I, impossible. We won't achieve. hit the top, surely not. There's no way. Not even possibility. I keep on raising <laughs> what the top is because every time, like, it's very awkward when I community. Like, it makes me look like I'm undervaluing their generosity when I'm like... We will raise five hundred million dollars for this charity, and then, like in the first twenty minutes, they raise six hundred million dollars, and I'm like, oh, "Yeah, well, I'm, I guess it. I <laughs> underestimated you again." Damn it, Twitch chat. <laughs> um, yeah, <laughs> but our but our stretch goals go pretty high up today. You probably okay. Safe. Okay. Hats donated forty dollars and says thanks for doing the stream. It means a lot to me to see people step up and do stuff for the trans community. Lesson three. Much love, hats. Weatherfish donated twenty dollars and said what a great way to share the love. Did I already say that? <laughs> do do you like waff? Thanks for the ten dollar donation. Long time lurker, first time being able to give financially. Love your stuff. Thank you very much. Glad you're enjoying the show. Knotted donated five hundred dollars. And says, I definitely don't have 500 fingers. How, how do you, you know if you don't know right what 500 is? Like, you could have 500. Love what you do, Jorbs. I've got a good friend that's directly benefiting from Transform. Oh, awesome. I've been, like, sort of blown away by how many people have said, like, hey, this charity specifically is really good, and, like, I know people who benefit from it and stuff today. It's really awesome. It's good to good to hear from viewers that they're doing a really good job. So Blank Guyver, thanks for the fifty dollar donation. Yob slash Jessica runs are the best though. Thank you very much, Blank Guyver. Blank Guyver says Mun Love Mun Podge. <laughs> Anonymous donated twenty five dollars and says can't watch for very long, but always willing to donate to a good cause. Thank you, Anonymous. Anonymous again donated twenty two dollars and said happy Valentine's, you fantastic people. Thank you, Anonymous. Anonymous again donated ten dollars with no message this time, and Twinge donated ten dollars and said less than three. Thank you, Twinge. Twinge less said three, Twinge. he was interested in checking out this mod character, and now it's on Steam Workshop. I'm totally gonna watch if you do, Twinge. Let me know if you're. Uh, or tweet it or something. You always tweet when you go live. I'll probably see. That would be fun to watch, like, the incredibly deep thought process of Twinge puzzling through these things with the incredibly complex cards of this character. Like, I don't know. I, I, would, be, I would not be surprised if we saw, like, multiple part streams to get through a run. But I'd be there for it. It'd be great. I mean, yeah. it would the most love Twinge, as you well know. <laughs> I think Twinge and I are sort of like, uh... I think we have certain synergy together. I think I get really complicated and thinky as a designer, and Twinge gets really complicated and thinky as a player. I know Twinge does game design too, so I'm really interested to hear his feedback if he plays a run. Personal Matthew donated $20 and said, We missed you, Jessica. Jorbs Jessica runs are the best, though. I agree. Jorbs Jessica time is wholesome. I always look I forward love to it, it. too. <laughs> the twinge run will end when the call comes out. Interesting. The 17 hour wanderer run. <laughs> <laughs> um, is Thirsting Sword one of the blades Cole uses? Without spoiling too much story here, yes. It is 
it is one of the swords that the Cole uses. So we looked at Thirsting Sword, we have Death Throws. Death Throws has that same entombed effect that Patron had, where it comes back on a condition. This one only deals 14 damage and remembers Wrath for you, which is the memory that upgrades your text permanently, and it comes back whenever an enemy dies. So this is like, this will kill all of the gremlins in the gremlin leader fight for you if you can kill one of them. All of a sudden you get a zero energy, 14 damage attack, and then it keeps coming back if you kill one with it. it triggers off of itself? It would trigger off itself, yeah. I see, cool. Uh, Wrath doesn't trigger on non... Wrath only triggers, sorry, on non-minion enemies, though. So you can't, like, farm a billion Wrath stacks off of this. But you may be able to make use of Wrath as well to buff up and attack a little bit. You're okay. Thanks for the Twitch Prime. Longbow Mosho to you as well. Um, this has no value at all in single target fights. Right, because so... it's not even... You're not even going to see it, though, right? Yeah, exactly. And then Ivory Tower. Draw two cards, exhaust all curse and status cards in your hand, and exhaust this. This is like a, it's a really fun think, card to have. And it upgrades to not exhaust. In the art, can we actually see you streaming from the very top of it? Yeah, is this is? is my apartment. Um, oh, I see. This is, uh, the viewpoint of the art is from one of the commoners standing on the edge <laughs> of the grounds, past which uh, no common folk are allowed to walk. They're patrolled by uh, cat hounds, uh, cats which have been trained for violence. I don't really know what we're meant to take here. Maybe death throws? I don't know. Is it possible really, to have yeah. all clarities at the same time? Yep, it's doable. Let's try a death throws, because I haven't played Let's death throws it, yeah. with the new art. And it looks really pretty. I'm pretty sure I haven't played it with the new art. Um, chokers are a tough sell, because our turn seven often revolves around playing a ton of cards with Grimoire. Slayer's playing a ton of cards fine. with Grimoire? How yeah, so that... Grimoire is the card that costs zero, shows up on turn seven, yeah, gets makes... you one of three material components. It exhumes after playing this than four other cards. So it comes back again. And once you're up to a deck with like four or five energy with some zero cost cards, you can play this lots of times on turn seven. I see, okay. And then it also keeps coming back after turn seven. So you may want to spam a bunch of cards if your deck is going to go late in fights. Okay. I think either Astrolabe or Slaver's Caller should be fine though. Does our deck want four energy? We've got like a Scorching Ray and a Flame Ward, so probably. Makes sense to me. It's more than three energy. You have that many fingers, five right? five energy. <laughs> uh, yep, yeah. yep, yeah, there they are. Yep. Grimoire is not a curse card, right? Grimoire was a curse card for a little bit, but we changed that. The birds are going to die to the flame ward. Unfortunately, we only get three energy for all the hallway fights, which may make Act 2 a little bit gross. Right. This character's pretty good at limping along to the boss gauntlet at the end of Act 3, even if things aren't going great, though. Which wasn't, like, exactly deliberate, and I'm not sure if I like it or not, but it's a thing. We could probably find a way to at least get past the Act 2 boss. Maybe. We'll see. I don't want to oversell it and then embarrass myself, I guess. <laughs> uh, but you really oversold it by saying it has a great job of limping along, just barely hanging on by a thread. <laughs> but if that's an oversell, we can take a step back. Sorry for my hyperbole. <laughs> we did random into gluttony, so gaining some max HP from this fight. There are three enemies as well. And then we can um, clarify gluttony. Oh shit, that's pride. I believe how this works is if we remember a new memory while we're remembering pride and end the fight, we get the benefits of both of the memories actually. So I believe when I play this, I meant to buff death throws with wrath and get an upgrade on a card with pride. Bonnie Sagas thinks the 19. Sungbomushu to you as well. Bunny Saga says, Great to see a charity stream and wonderful to see Jessica on stream. Have missed the munch down, but grats on the job. 
Thank you. Did I say congratulations on the job, by the way? Congratulations on the job. I, I was wondering why you didn't approve of my life decisions, but but thank you. I'm very sad you're not streaming anymore. <laughs> we didn't get the we didn't get the wrath stack from that. True Strike might be the best art. I think a lot of them are the best art, though. So. Hmm. I feel like that art needs to belong to Melter, though. <clears throat> oh, prevented or reduced. It's appropriate, after all. I take back my comment. Yeah, it, it does the thing. It successfully puts Spirit Guardian on two health with 60 shield, if that's what you need to do. <laughs> Oh, <laughs> um, you can upgrade it to have it actually kill Spirit Guardian. Damn. So you're telling me it's like Melter that you need to upgrade first? Alright, sign me up. I'm ready. I've had some success with it, just taking it for like Act 1 elite damage and stuff. It's a way to turn energy into damage. It's not super mm -hmm. exciting, it doesn't. It could kill the heart on turn 1 in the right deck, is a thing. I was trying to run down a list of enemies who prevent damage and I was kind of coming up empty but I guess the heart is one of them huh anything with a shield if you are weak the damage won't be reduced oh I see okay if you have negative strength overall the damage won't be reduced I'm pretty sure it's like an okay carnage type card and just deal some damage right. chain lightning looks really cool <laughs> it sure does uh, it actually makes the lightning, like, strike from above them and goes poof, 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 in, like, a random order when you play it as well. Nice. Yeah, it's very cool. I don't think the card's that good, though, so that's unfortunate. You can take right. Find Familiar. At the start of each turn, gain Clarity of Current Memory. This is a way to get our clarities rolling if we want to do that. I see. Do you want to do that? Probably. We've got, like, this one remembers, this one remembers... This one remembers, this one remembers, this one remembers. We only have one way to make clarity. It seems like we would want this. Is remembering lust a good thing? Like, I know some of them have downsides when you first remember them, but do they stay beneficial if you gain clarity of them? Yes. Lust is just an envenom while you're remembering it. Lust doesn't currently have any enter or exit effects. Some of the other ones do, though. Counterspell. <laughs> you got Counterspell, you got Brainstorm. I see what kind of a person this character is. It's interesting that you're going to the Magic the Gathering cards, because a lot of people go to the D&D spell names. Uh, yeah, D&D was really not... I never really played much of that, if you couldn't tell. I might... This is more for Twitch chat than for you, but I might have successfully convinced Kevin to DM. Well, I think actually Kevin might have successfully convinced Kevin to DM for us, which would be incredible. Fractured Mind is a card that gets stronger with Snap. It becomes like twice an Iron Wave. And then I think it's a fun card to play. I've had a lot of fun with this card. You can do some weird stuff with it where like you maybe need block but can't remember a virtue so you have to random into a virtue or something like that and you see what happens um black tentacles you haven't seen yet it's a uh, six damage for zero energy card but it also makes it so all aoe damage just becomes single target on the enemy with the debuff that's pretty cool yeah, so you can like put this on Reptomancer and then play an AoE attack and like kill Reptomancer if there are four daggers sort of idea. Right. Uh, did we see Wandering Mind? We already saw Wandering Mind. We saw Arcane Weapon. Yeah, so I think this is... I mean, none of them are so great. I'm okay with Happy Flower. It seems sort of... I mean, Happy Flower is a good relic. Just click on Happy Flower. <coughs> Let's click on Happy Flower. Deal. I tried clicking on Happy Flower, but I just paused the stream. Do you have any advice for me? It's okay. I got gotcha. you. 
We've got an Uma Mori, so we don't even take the Necronomic Curse here. Oh, we got Encoridian. That's sort of lame. I feel bad for the Encridian because that's just like the reaction to it, you know? It shows up and you're like, oh, it's you. I think it's uh, really good, but also... Right, but you still are like, boring. I mean, what did you say when you saw it? Yeah, exactly. No, you're right. <laughs> we randomed a magic mirror, which applies any debuffs that we receive to the enemies that apply them to us. So nice. we have successfully frailed Shelled Parasite, which doesn't do anything. Feels kind of satisfying, though. Feels like we're getting back at the most hated enemy in the game. Looks or one of them, at least. Cool. Try not to die at the moment. I, I didn't want to sound alarmist, but I was curious... Uh, what you're putting our current odds of survival at. In this fight, right now, Ooh. I think we're actually dead at the moment. I think, uh... Unless we have so Toy great. Ornithopter. But I don't think we do. Doesn't, doesn't. Well, do you want to be in charge of the next run? Because, uh, apparently I've killed us. <laughs> I mean... Look, I don't want to be pointing a finger here, but I do remember recommending playing your cards in alphabetical order that one turn. <laughs> and now, here we are, ten floors later, having lost. So, I don't know. There's more character voice acting. The character said, rest. Aw. Yeah, you I can rest all you that. like now. No, thank you. Do you want to do another Wanderer run? Do you want to maybe look at the compendium and see some of the other cards? Or would you like to play a different character run? Gosh, they're all so appealing. I could go for any of them. Do you have a, like, is there something that you are particularly drawn to? <laughs> Your panel is here. Thanks for the nine months. I'm going to show you too. Um, let's see. I'm going to be doing like a coaching run for Watcher after this, so definitely not Watcher at the moment. Okay. I'll do a silent run. I haven't done a silent run yet today. I did Defect sure, let's do and silent. Ironclad. Sounds good to me. Let's skim through the coal red yeah. color. <clears throat> let's skim through the cards first. Okay. Oh my gosh. I haven't seen so. <laughs> Pog? Pog? <laughs> I wonder, I wonder why that's spelled wrong. It's sort of weird. Dude, Electro Ball has the real idea here. Let's do some more audio troubleshooting. <laughs> hey, Electro Ball. How are you? Yeah. Um, ooh. Haven't seen double check art on the card. Rygon, thanks very much for the 10 gift subs to the channel. Many Agabomo shows to you as well. It has also been suggested that we play Stardew Valley. Oh man, chat's not ready for that. No one's ready for that. Also, Electro Ball, it just dawned on me that you were like truly my inspiration in like shepherding me into this game, and then also shepherding me the hell out of this game and off Twitch. So I got I got a lot to thank Electro Ball for. Really? For, uh... <laughs> You followed Electro Bolt's footsteps I, off I Twitch? I followed uh, ex exactly that. I didn't even realize it until right now. I was following these mysterious footsteps, and now I know who they belong to. Brief look at coal stuff as well. Yeah, I heard sure. some, some murmurings of coal, and I didn't want to appear uninformed. But what, oh, is, what is coal? We should just do a coal run. Coal is not ready is mostly what call is. We'll do a call run. That'll be fun. Okay. It's like missing 35 cards and hasn't been balanced. <laughs> but, <laughs> but it will be fun. <laughs> Don't worry. It will be great. Mending I, is like I'm a self-repair so sort of card. Uh-huh. Thanks for the thousand bits, Sess Rebellier. Charities. Somewhat interesting, I think. 
until Forgotten gain one strength for every hundred gold you have. So if you can That's gain clarity of that, all of a sudden you like you do get something out of having a thousand gold. But I think usually there's still better stuff to spend gold on than it. Yeah. You know, it's so I've been I mentioned earlier that I've been playing on the Switch, and the Switch is some level of being patches behind the current version of the game. And so there's relics that are in well first like the boss relics are still not changed, but also like occasionally I'll get like the old coin relic and just like look at it blankly like who are you? Oh, that's right. You just give me 300 bucks and that's just you. It's a very surreal experience, as you can tell. 300 gold. <laughs> it sounds yeah. incredible. It, it's three strength if you have one of those cards. Refuse to forget is the Wanderer shirtless going <laughs> I memento. I think this is I beta do. art. <laughs> <laughs> this one, this one's beta art. We don't have the official. Do you have art any like yet. larger versions of that for downloadable uh, purposes? Uh, we might. We <laughs> might. Oh, I'm trying to put some of these artworks on posters so that people can buy posters of them. That might be illegal to put on a poster, though. This one. <laughs> e equals E. Pog. Yeah, Pog indeed. Smithing Strike remembers Wrath for you, so this is just a very simple way to remember Wrath and start buffing your attacks, so you can put together some sort of strategy based around one or two attacks that you've buffed up a huge amount. Uh, Banish is a ton of fun. Enemy takes no action and no damage for two turns. Oh, that is cool. It would be a lot stronger on a different character, but for Wanderer, you blow up on turn seven, so... <laughs> That's what I was just thinking, yeah. Yeah, passing a turn isn't all upside for you. Mm -hmm. There's determination. <laughs> yep. That's Rob Lear. Thanks for gifting us up to Zylan. Uncle Bomo show to you, too. Ephemeral is yep. like exhaust plus ethereal. Um, it also discards when you discard. It also exhausts when you discard the card. But by the way, I've also played Undertale, so I get it and am cool. Just want to, you know, put that out there. I haven't played Undertale, but I s still think it's cool art. Okay. Is that okay? I mean, no, but I'll say yes. This is an no, example okay. of a card that snaps oh, you for a benefit. I I'm not a huge You're stuck fan on of this the art. art. Yeah. yeah, I yeah. <laughs> no, that's fair. It's very uncomfortable art. Jinfizz's makes very uncomfortable art. Jinfizz wow. also Is made Thorns, which like Thorns makes me more uncomfortable than trauma does. I that oh god, they both <laughs> don't make me very comfortable. Yeah, no, right. To be perfectly honest. So you really so I, I feel like not only are you pushing character creation in terms of the actual game mechanics, but also in the art, in terms of having creepy things, injured cute animals, side butt, it's really... Oh, the cat's really dead is not injured, stuff. just for what it's worth, but... Okay. <laughs> <laughs> um... So yeah, you. This is like a huge MLA. I only type the third for Bible thumb. I only typed two the first Bible time around. This is Bible thumb number three. <laughs> what else is interesting here? Purge Mind is another one that snaps you. Exhaust all cards which you remember, then deal eight damage once per such card in your exhaust pile. So this goes through your entire hand draw pile and discard pile for cards which you remember. Exhausts them all, and then is a huge fiend fire type effect. But then you snap at the end. So. This card has generally been like very, very strong until you get to boss fights, at which point it doesn't do enough anymore. Which is like sort of like what Fiendfire is, I guess. Right. Pyromancy is your chase rare for burning. Doubles burning applied. Mm-hmm. Yeah. 
think I've shown do we, you. Do we have a form card? Form is arcane form, which gives you clarity of patience, lust, diligence, kindness, and chastity. Is that pretty, like, I have no idea of how good or, is that it's like a solid fine. effect? Okay, yeah, probably fine. Shit. Yeah, it's pretty good. It's like playing an Envenom plus a half a Piercing Whale that lasts forever, plus a Well-Laid Plans, I'm plus in. a Metella Size, but you lose one Dexterity stuff. every turn. Oh. Yeah, that still sounds... Yeah. And also, the way that the memories work, you can't get clarity of something twice. So you can't like stack this, whereas you can stack other stuff or other characters. So you can't like have a four times arcane form deck and just play four arcane forms and be ridiculously strong, because the second one actually doesn't do anything if you've played one already. Right. The same way that you could have like a 4x searing blow deck, for example. <laughs> You're the one who invited me here, right? <laughs> I didn't invite you here. Let's Maybe that happened again. Turn up the voiceovers to 69%. Enable incomplete/slash in development version of call. Requires restart. 